This 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. Our top story at noon, Kern County's economy is one step closer to reopening. That's because tomorrow, Kern is set to move into the less restrictive orange tier. 17's Aton Wallace joins us now with what that means for our local economy. Aton? Well, Nicole, it means a lot for the local economy. Kern County Public Health Director Bryn Kerrigan making the big announcement at this morning's Board of Supervisors meeting. Now, we are moving into the orange tier because we met the state required testing and Kate's rate metrics to go into this tier. Here is what will happen when we move into the orange tier. Bars can open outdoors with modifications and restaurants can open indoor capacity to 50 percent or 200 people, whichever is fewer. Gyms and fitness centers can open with 25 percent capacity indoors and capacity at movie theaters increases to 50 percent or 200 people, whichever is fewer. Museums and zoos can open indoor capacity to 50 percent and retail has no capacity limits. Now here is where vaccinations come into play. This is important. Family entertainment centers can open at 25 percent capacity capacity or if all guests show proof of full vaccination or testing they can open at 50 percent and outdoor live events can open at 33 percent capacity or 67 percent if all guests show proof of full testing or vaccination now of course the original point of closing the economy depended on how our hospitals are doing well today kerrigan provided an update on that point would you say that our hospital capacity is fine Supervisor Maggard, through the chair, currently our COVID-related hospitalizations are very low and we do have sufficient hospital capacity at the moment. Now, these excellent informative graphics can be found on our Instagram account, at KGET News. To go through these graphics in depth, simply head to our Instagram page and we would be grateful for a follow. Of course, much more information on our website, KGET.com. Meantime, tonight on 17 News at 5, we will have the latest numbers on the vaccination effort here in Kern County. And now the pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccines in the U.S. will impact Kern. We'll see you then. Reporting in studio, Aton Wallace, 17 News. All right, thanks for that update, Aton. Now, taking a look around the nation, the Minnesota police officer who fatally shot a man during a traffic stop and the city's chief of police have resigned. Officer Kim Potter and police chief Tim Gannon both stepped down two days after the death of 20-year-old Dante Wright in Brooklyn Center. Potter is a 26-year-old, 26-year veteran who Gannon believed mistakenly grabbed her gun instead of the taser. The shooting has sparked outrage across the country. Some say Wright was racially profiled with the community already on edge over the trial of former police officer Derek Chauvin. Meantime, President Biden and members of Congress continue to pay tribute to a fallen U.S. Capitol police officer killed in the line of duty. Officer William Billy Evans, an 18-year veteran of the force, will lie in the Capitol Rotunda today, becoming just the fourth Capitol police officer to lie in his honor. He was killed earlier this month after being struck by a car at a security checkpoint outside of the Capitol. President Biden, speaking from the heart, offered words of tribute and encouragement to the family during the congressional ceremony. Evans was just 41 years old. And Congressman Kevin McCarthy joining in on honoring the fallen Capitol Police officer. In a statement, he says the violent attack targeted Capitol Police by an unhinged individual is the definition of evil. But because of the heroism of Officer Evans, many lives were saved. You can find more of that statement on our website, kget.com. We'll take a look here at home. The community is honoring the life of a 17-year-old boy who was hit and killed by a train in Northwest Bakersfield. Just before the sun went down last night, at least 100 people gathered near the site of the accident just off of Santa Fe Way, north of Renfro Road. Bakersfield police say the crash happened on the railroad tracks in the same area around 6.30 Sunday evening. Those in attendance fondly remembered the late high school student referred to as AJ as a great young man. BNSF Railway investigators are handling the investigation with the help of Bakersfield Police. The cause is still under investigation. Anyone with information is asked to contact BNSF Railway at 1-800-832-5452. Happening this afternoon, the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office is expected to announce major developments in the disappearance case of Kristen Smart. Now, Smart was a Cal Poly San Luis Obispo student who went missing in 1996. The 19-year-old college student was legally declared dead in 2002, but her body was never found. 
Paul Flores, a classmate of Smart, who has been long described as a prime suspect by authorities, was taken into custody by the sheriff's office today, according to one of our sister stations. You can watch that full press conference on our Facebook page and on our website, KGET.com. It is starting at 2 p.m. All right, now to the latest on the fight against COVID-19 in Kern County. Public Health announced two new deaths today. Now, those deaths both occurred in March. This is just an indication that public health may have caught up in the lag of reported deaths. We now have lost 1,306 people incurred to the virus. 60 new cases of COVID-19 were also added to today's toll totals. State data shows there are 46 people with more acute symptoms of the virus and are being treated in local hospitals, and 14 are being cared for in intensive care units. Our daily average is also down, and we haven't seen levels this low since mid-May of last year. Well, the U.S. is recommending a pause in administration of the single-dose Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine to investigate reports of potentially dangerous blood clots. In a joint statement, the CDC and FDA said it was investigating clots in six women in the days after vaccination in combination with reduced platelet counts. More than 6.8 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine have been administered in the U.S., Federal mass vaccination sites will pause the use of the J&J shot, and states and other providers are expected to follow. CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices will meet tomorrow to discuss the cases. The FDA has also launched an investigation. Now, this pause is forcing local vac vaccination sites to just rethink their plan in general. Now, the mass vaccination site at Cal State Bakersfield is pausing the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The decision comes as the CDC and FDA are calling for the halt of all J&J &J vaccines. CSUB's vaccination hub will immediately be giving the Pfizer vaccine to anyone 16 and up instead. Now, appointments are preferred, but walk-ins are accepted. The site is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. And Bakersfield College is pausing all clinics that would distribute the Johnson & Johnson vaccine over new guidance from the CDC and FDA. BC will continue accepting appointments for the Moderna vaccine and anyone who needs their second shot. All appointments can be found on the state's website. BC says if you have received the one-dose shot of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in the past week and are experiencing any health issues, you should meet with your doctor immediately. And beginning tomorrow, the Kern County Fairgrounds mass vaccination site will offer drive through vaccinations. The site has been offering the vaccine to walk-ins, but will soon expand, allowing people to get vaccinated from their cars as well as walk-ins. Anyone 16 years and older can sign up to get a vaccine. You can make an appointment by heading to the state's website, myturn.ca.gov. You can also call the number on your screen. That's 833-422-4255. Clinica Sierra Vista is now offering rapid COVID-19 testing and COVID-19 vaccinations. Call 833-278-4584 to make your appointment. But don't delay. Clinica Sierra Vista, putting patients first. In your 17 Business Watch, Facebook announces that it's working to connect people with information regarding vaccine availability in their state. Now, Facebook says it is working with each state to tailor notifications and users' news feeds to coincide with each state opening their eligibility. The company did something similar during the 2020 election, tailoring no notifications regarding registering to vote and mail-in ballot deadlines. Facebook will roll out notifications as states and the U.S. and nations around the world open up vaccinations. The social media giant is also working with state health departments to get people accurate and reliable information. Now, West Virginia reports an increase in registrations for vaccines since Facebook started running the notifications. Facebook is running these notifications in nearly 20 countries with more coming up. Taking a look around town now, you have a chance to get your children up to date on immunizations this week. Now, Adventist Health is hosting a child immunization clinic in the parking lot of Delano Union School District on Norwalk Street. It's happening until 4.30 p.m. today. Vaccinations are free. Just call ahead to schedule an appointment. That number is 869-6740. And if you miss today's event, don't worry. There's another clinic happening tomorrow at Adventist Health Bakersfield on Chester Avenue. It runs from 1 p.m. to to 6 p.m. Well, Adventist Health of Bakersfield is expanding. Now, the hospital has announced ambitious plans for a new campus on Coffee Road just south of Rosedale Highway. It's 
in its $26 million transaction with World Oil, $16 million of it a donation. Adventus has acquired 50 acres east of Coffee Road, directly across from an undeveloped long doormat, Bakersfield Commons to the west. Now, Adventus representatives didn't say whether the new campus will have a specific area of specializations or given a timetable for its completion, but the development could have big implications for Bakersfield Commons, which at 240 acres is one of the largest pieces of undeveloped land under single ownership within the Bakersfield city limits. And coming up tonight, 17's Robert Price will have more on the transaction and its possible ramifications. That's happening at 6 p.m. Well, community members are decorating the fence around Sumner Station in Old Town Kern as a way of showing hope for the future of the building. 17's Robert Price first reported last month that the Union Pacific train station, built more than 130 years ago, is in danger of being demolished. The hub of Bakersfield is urging residents to do their part to support the effort to save the depot by adding flowers or colorful yarn to the fence and signing the petition to save Sumner Station. For more information, you can visit our website, kget.com, and click on the hot link icon. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nextar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to kget.com.